will come up with a poll question today or two. 877-3DP-SHOW. Get the phone calls as well. Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz has an SUV for you. Whether it's the stylish GLC, the compact GLA, the three-row GLS, or the GLE and GLC plug-in hybrids. Visit MBUSA.com for special offers. He's back. He's back better than ever, as opposed to last Tuesday when he wasn't able to join us. Saquon Barkley of the Eagles joining us on the program. Give me the difference in uh, morale, how you're feeling as opposed this Tuesday as opposed to last Tuesday. Um, yeah, I mean, Victory Mondays are, are definitely a lot better. But for me, to be honest, I've been something I've been wanting to focus on this season. Um, you know, work on my trainers or work or whatever, one of my mentors is not really getting too caught up in the results and just fall in love with the process. Um, so week to week, just being consistent in that. Um, and if I'm able to stay more consistent, I'm going to have, you know, game, more games like this week uh, rather than a loss. How long does that loss stay with you? Uh, it's probably, you know, it's definitely a little more difficult when, you know, there's usually three to four plays a game. Uh, that want to lose you a game, and when you're part of that reason, uh, sticks with you a little longer. But uh, I kind of just had a, a nice little hour ride back home because of traffic after the game. Um, you know, went to sleep, woke up, watched film, watched the play, and kind of just put it in the pass. Uh, that's the beauty of the NFL. Uh, you, know, you got this, this. We had to go to New Orleans Saints uh, right away, so you couldn't really, you know, harp on it too much. But learn from your mistakes and move on from it. How, what was film session like? Uh, I mean, when you really break it down, uh, I probably had you know, a better game, not statistically, uh, against Atlanta than I had uh, this week uh, against the Saints. Um, but just one play. Uh, you know, I was consistent that whole game, and I just relaxed in a big moment and, uh, you know, dropped the ball. But then you get the tight game against New Orleans. Um, do you say anything? In, like, what's the huddle like with the game on the line? Who's talking other than Jalen? All of us, you know, all of us. I, I think that's the beauty of this team. We got a lot of, you know, captains and leaders on this team. And, and at that moment, you know, I can remember in the huddle right before that two-minute drive, you know, we're all looking at each other just saying, no matter what, find a way. Just continue to believe in each other. Um, and we're going to go down and dr drive and put points on the board. And uh, Dallas came up big for us on that drive. Can you lobby for the ball? Like receivers do this all the time. Can you – go back and say either to offensive coaches or quarterback that give me the ball? Uh, yeah. Uh, the beauty of having Kellen uh, on the sideline is, you know, he has a better feel for the game. You, he can he can get a feel for the game. So sometimes, you know, you're in the game and you get in that, that zone and uh, you're flowing, right? You know, you can look to the sideline or when you're over there, you can let them know, like, this is what I see, this is what I like, and this is what I don't like. Um, you can have those conversations and um, it can get changed right there. Is the running game back? Like, I don't want to overreact to this, but it certainly feels like teams are running the ball a little bit more through three weeks. Oh, uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, I'm not trying to overreact to it either, but uh, you see a lot of backs, you know, having a lot of great games. Um, you know, that's just the nature of the game. You're paying a lot of money to these quarterbacks and to these wide receivers. So defense got to come up with, you know, game plans and schemes to make sure you don't throw the ball uh, around. Um, and, you know, we have – all of that we have great receivers great tight ends great linemen and i, I believe i'm a, I'm a i'm a pretty decent back and we have a great quarterback so we haven't even you know put it all together yet so when we put it all together we're gonna be a hard team to stop yeah but i don't understand this that the running back got kicked to the curb everybody else got paid and running backs didn't like you were you were like scratching and clawing just to get you know a million dollars more whatever it was like I, it felt like you're almost begging for people to pay you what you think you're worth. What that? What was the process like going through that? I think it's just the timing, you know. It's just bad timing, uh, especially for me uh, when it, when it was time for me to get paid. But it's it's you know, everyone is all into analytics and stats and this and that. And you know, if you look at the numbers of uh, what's the highest rusher that was paid the most in the Super Bowl and, you know, it's the quarterbacks. And obviously the quarterbacks is the one that fuels it. And, you know, you can get a lot of these great backs in later rounds and, uh, you know, use them for three years and then continue to have that. But, um, you know, I, I think that's just something that people just make up. I, it's it's not really me. I think one of the, the better quarterbacks in NFL right now is Brock Purdy. 
Um, shout out to him. You know, obviously on the Applebee sponsorship together. Uh, but he's a, he was a, he was the last pick of the draft. You know what I mean? He was the last pick of the draft and uh, NFC Championship game the year before, Super Bowl game last year. Uh, so you know, it's just everything. It's kind of just what they want the motive to be. Um, but I'm just blessing. You know, happy for the opportunity that I have right now. You should go to Applebee's full uniform. Just walk in, sit down, eye black, helmet on, just place an order, just sit there. I think I should, uh, and especially get the 50% uh, bonus wings, um, what they have oh. going on right now. So, uh, and, and, and if I go on a cheat day, get my favorite uh, triple chocolate uh, meltdown cake. We've been doing this. I've been doing this a long time. It's very rare when somebody reaches out and sends a personal note, a text to say, I'm sorry, I can't join you. I uh, have great respect for you and certainly um, appreciated you doing that. You didn't have to. I did agree that you shouldn't have come on after that loss. It wouldn't have been a good look for you. But, um, you know, you had a sponsorship there. But thank you for sending the text to the show. I really appreciate that. Yeah, of course. I felt like that was the right thing to do. Um, and I, I saw what you put out there. And I agree, too. Um, I, I don't think more so of not being a good look for me, because at the end of the day, um, I'm a big boy. I get paid a lot of money. Um, and that happens when you, when you make mistakes or you let a team down. you got to face those questions. And I did that after the game and, to be honest, throughout the whole week leading up to the Saints. But uh, I definitely felt like it would have took off a lot of, uh, you know, the focus on, um, you know, the sponsor and Applebee's and, you know, the, the official bar and grill of the NFL. Um, and I said 50%, not 50%, 50 cent <laughs> bonus wins, by the way. Um, but, yeah, but for me, I just felt like that was the right thing to do. And, you know, being a big fan of your show and obviously, you know, talking to you and sitting down with you and, you know, kind of being mentor and giving me a lot of great advice, I felt like that was the right thing to do. All right. If you if you need advice to go into this business one day, my advice would be to get into the business quicker while you're still playing. I think that's really important. Is get get some reps here. You know, learn learn how to ask questions, or if you're going to be just an analyst, uh, watch analysts, certain analysts, and say, all right, I'm going to pattern myself. But if this is what you want to do, start working on that now. As I told you when I think I saw you in Miami at the Super Bowl. Yeah, on that topic, how do you feel about uh, podcasts for athletes? Well, you got to tell me something, and you got to be careful. Like Micah Parsons, to me, is becoming more for a podcaster in what he says than the way he's playing because Dallas hasn't been playing well, and he's a wonderful player. It's just you got to be careful if you're going to do one. What are you saying while you're still playing? And people aren't going to just tune in and go, "Oh, Saquon Barkley's got a podcast." They want to know what is different about your podcast. And, and that's, the, that's the true challenge that I tell athletes or former athletes. What are you telling me that I can't get elsewhere? What are you doing that's different than anybody else? That would be the challenge uh, that I would have for you. Have somebody on with you, uh, but you got to say things. you gotta have, you got to have content there, and mm -hmm. a lot of people don't want to say anything. So that's where I would caution you. If you go in and do it, then do it and have a purpose, have a game. I mean, it's no different than you week in, week out. Have a game plan. But you got to have that game plan. You know, Draymond Green has done a pretty good job, but he likes being a bad guy. He likes yeah. being the villain. You know, are you are you capable of, like, you're too likable. You know, can you, can you be a bad guy? Do you want to be a villain? You know, th those are things that you have to embrace, and, and that's the, really the big challenge I find for athletes. Yeah, I think um, I think more of a find a ways like on a bye week or uh, play a safe play a Thursday night game in a short week, trying to get on um, television and, and, and do stuff like that, because that's absolutely something I want to do. Uh, I, I've had a passion for it um, ever since I got in the league. Um, but like you said, I think it's you have to be able to you know have purpose behind it. And it's hard to balance, uh, especially in the NFL. And, you know, you only have 17 weeks. And when you're balling and you're playing high, it's easy to go on that show and talk. <laughs> um, but if you have a, a, a important drop in Monday night football and everyone's saying you suck and you should go back to New York. I do. I, I do like the podcast <laughs> for athletes because uh, I feel like it gives you um, a say, especially during my whole conversation or the whole um, negotiation process with New York. And there would be stories leaked of me and, oh, is this number or that number? It gives you your voice. But I think you, I think you hit it on, you know, I think you hit it on the but, head. But, but um, Saquon, that's that's the right approach. But will, would you have been willing to come on after that loss when you dropped the pass, 
that next day and do a podcast and be honest with people? Would you be honest with, you know, some of the hate that you got from fans, the anger you got from fans? Now, if you do that, now you got some people's attention there. But are you willing to do that to be that revealing? Yeah, I think it's it depends, right? Uh, it's easier, I feel like, when it's all on my back because I can go over there and talk about myself. But like you said, you know, when I'm working for a brand and, you know, obviously we're here uh, on behalf of Applebee's, uh, kind of taking, you know, the the spotlight away from them when, you know, they've been doing a tremendous job for me um, and putting sure. me in a position. So when you when it's on your own self and, you know, it's I do it anyway. Uh, I have 20,000 cameras in my face saying, how do you feel about that drop and this <laughs> and that and the third? You know, so it's like I, I answer the question. So I feel like it, it, you, you have your voice there, um, but then you also have your voice on your own platform. But it's a give and take and it's tough. And, you know, I think Micah, you know, obviously being a good friend of Micah, um, you know, I think he's doing a, a great job. But like I said, especially in that market, it definitely could be, you know, Dallas, Philly, and New York. Those probably the three. You got to win. You, you yeah. got to win. I mean, that yeah. that makes it a whole lot easier. What bothered you about Hard Knocks in how you were portrayed? To be honest, it really wasn't the, the, uh, Hard Knocks. It was more the year prior uh, with negotiation because, like, you would get these you would get these numbers that would come out and be like, Saquon turned down this and Saquon turned down that. And, like, some of the numbers would be correct, but, it, like, it, they would give you some of the truth but not the whole truth. And like just the truth to kind of spin it and make a certain person look bad. And it's just like, well, all right, if I, if me and you are having this conversation, right, and we're talking numbers and then it goes out that this number was said and only me and you had this conversation yeah. <laughs> and I'm not the one who said it, I know it definitely came from you. So for the hard knocks thing, I thought the hard knocks was a cool, unique way to let fans in because obviously it's always been about training camp, but let fans in and see um the off season and see how how really like because i watched the episode three and i think it was cool how they like they had like the poker table and like they're like okay this is where you gotta do this with the spot or get the office alignment it get fan it gives fan the opportunity to see that uh have that perspective but um for me it was weird i guess because a lot of it was about me and like i was like it felt like it was just like all right my name was just getting used because in reality it was like i had one phone call with joe uh which was the phone call that was on and my agent probably spoke to him a couple of times but like on this side like in my life in reality it was like the giants really never were actually in play the second time for me going to negotiation or hitting the free agency when they could have been the whole time so it was fun it was it was different um but i really think it was cool for the fans for sure yeah, I, I felt bad for you because I don't think you knew that you were uh, being taped, that this was on camera, that you're kind of negotiating. And and then when did you find out that they were going to put that on hard knocks and you didn't even know that you were being recorded? Um. Yeah, I, I don't I wasn't upset about that. Uh, you know, it's part of business. Like I said, uh, I didn't find out to the trailer. I saw a trailer of like the hard knocks of the Giants. and I was like, oh, it's going to be pretty cool. And I looked at it and, then, you know, I heard <laughs> Uh, you know, a conversation of me, uh, but I, I wasn't really upset about it. I honestly, I reached out to to Joe, and I was just like, I wish you would have told me. I would have put my acting voice on. Uh, I would have, you know, I would have gave me. I don't know. I would have gave a TV, uh, a, a TV answer, and um, you know, uh, you know, made a little more fun, spice up the show a little bit more. But uh, yeah, it's it's that that really didn't bother me. Um, and I don't well, think when I said they told anything. you. Saquon, when they told you, hey, go out and get another offer, and then let us know. I'm like, who does that? Who says, hey, you know, good luck out there, and then, but let us know. Hey, you're going to let us know. And I go, he's not going to let you know. Once he gets that offer, he's gone. You're not coming uh, back. It's like if you say to your wife, hey, if you find a better offer, go ahead. But, you know, I hope you come back to me, hon. Hey, listen, you're, you're, you're talking way too logical right now. A lot of people need to think <laughs> a little more like you, if, I, if I'll be honest. Um, that conversation, too, uh, you know, I had a whole year, you know, he said – uh, Joe said it took however many years off his life, the negotiation process the year before, but it probably took 10 times more on my life. But shout out mm -hmm. to my agent, to be honest, uh, before the conversation, he was just like, just keep it short and sweet. So I didn't overreact to that. I just kind of, you know, I said what I said. And, you know, I still feel the same way about New York and the Giants organization. I got nothing but love for those guys and um, Mr. Mayor family and Tish family. Yeah, you're just glad that you're in an Eagles uniform instead of a Giants uniform. I'm having a blast. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm still in the NFL. I'm loving it. There's some guys that would love to be in my position. 
He's Saquon Barkley joining us on behalf of Applebee's. They're uh, teaming up all season long to keep fans fueled with America's favorite boneless wings. Great to talk to you. Good luck, and uh, thanks for joining us as always. Always a pleasure, man. Take care. Saquon Barkley, Eagles running back, second overall pick, 2018 by the Giants.